ask and you shall receive seek and you shall find <laughs> wow that's so cheesy uh, but guys, I have basically seen all your comments, I have received your emails, and literally your thousands and thousands of requests. Um, and I'm basically here to deliver. I am here just for you. Um, but guys, if you don't know me, my name is Samuel Dada, and I'm a PhD student at Cambridge University um, in the most amazing college, enjoy my research in the best lab ever, and I want the same for you. So, I have decided to basically create a series of videos essentially taking you through the whole graduate or postgraduate application process. From writing your CV, to sending that all important email to a potential supervisor that you want to work with, to the interview process. Um, I am no expert by any means, but I am basically going to use my experience of what I have learnt um, to essentially help you. So, we've got this, we can do this, so... Let's go! Ooh. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, just before we get straight down to business because we do want to get straight down to business I just want to remind you guys to please subscribe to my channel push that notification bell to be reminded of any content I release give me a thumbs up press that like button comment down below if there's anything you want to see some more of on my channel and also you can follow me on Instagram to keep up to date with what I get up to on a day-to-day -day basis as a PhD student at Cambridge University anyway let's get straight into it so guys, um, research proposal is one of those things that some people might have to do for their PhD or postgraduate application and some people might not have to do it. Um, so if you're applying, for example, for a specific project, you might not be required to do this because the PI that you're applying for has probably already written the proposal and already has the funding for that project. Um, if you're applying, for example, for a program like I did where you have like rotations at the beginning, you're probably not required to do this, but you might be required to do it later on before you start your PhD for example I had to do that um, during my first year after my rotation where I had to write a proposal um, and I had the assistance and the guidance of my PI to do that um, for my funding body but if you're applying for a competition funded um, PhD program um, then you might be actually required to do this where you actually look for a supervisor first of all and then you basically write a PhD proposal and then you go with that supervisor's um, guidance um, to basically compete for funding in order to carry out that project um, for the PhD or the master's degree so having said that I think it's very important for you for the application stage to always have the guidance of the PI that you're wanting to work with or the supervisor that you wanted to work with because they'll be able to guide you through um, what to write and um, maybe the best things to do for a specific pro um, program uh, or um, funding body um, so in general, I think for an application, for a PhD kind of um, proposal, I think it's very um, important to keep it very short, maybe one page, no longer than one page. A uh, good thing to do is maybe actually look at findaphd.com and see all those kind of um, project um, funded PhD. PhDs which are advertised by several PIs or supervisors where they've actually given kind of a detail of the project um, that you'd be undertaking. So that's a good way of kind of guiding yourself in terms of how to structure um, a PhD proposal just for the application process. Okay guys, I just thought I should give you an example of what I'm talking about in terms of how you can use um, like findofphd.com as a way of guiding your research proposal. So here as you can see I have an example here and this is like an advert from a PhD project um, at Cambridge University and if I scroll down as you can see um, there is a description about the project. Obviously the first part is kind of irrelevant in terms of using this as a guide for writing a quick PhD proposal for um, your application. So where it gets interesting um, is where it, you look at the second paragraph. So here it kind of gives a brief, um, brief description 
of kind of the general aspects of the project in terms of the body of work so this is about acting cytoskeleton just talking about the importance of it the significance of it and how um it's implicated in multiple diseases pathway like you know kidney disease neuro um neurodevelopmental de defects and so on and so forth and cancers um then goes into acting filaments like what it's all about and then you can see they've kind of given um uh, a reference to just an overview of like where most of the information is from and then they go on to the second part um, which talks about you know the project aim so kind of delving into what the project aims to do essentially um, and also you can see it says that this project aims, um, aims to test the utility of antibodies in cellular models by optimizing their design and testing efficacy on measuring actin cytoskeletal activity. Um, so essentially this is kind of a methodology kind of based um, project as you can see um, and they've kind of given you know um, the overview of it. Um, obviously this is written as a PI writing this to obviously a student or like proposing an idea which they probably would have submitted anyway um, and it just says the student will be will test the expression stability of single chain and IgG antibodies um, fragment in cell lines so it kind of this is what you need to do you know like kind of tell them okay what does what do you aim to do in your kind of your phd essentially so that's what your proposal should be about and then kind of just given a brief overview of everything that you kind of you're going to set um yourself to kind of address in terms of questions and this is what um this has been able to do and then if we go straight down you can see um it's kind of broken down like what i was saying about timelines kind of broken down into three different timelines so it's a kind of I think a four-year program or three-year program but um, you can see it says year one you determine the expression um, localization of antibody construct year two this is what you do you measure year three this is what you do so it's kind of a brief overview just taking them to like kind of your aims and goals for each um, academic well academic year essentially um, and this is just kind of an overview of in terms of how you can kind of you know write your PhD proposal just for uh, kind of a PhD application because sometimes it's actually very restrictive in terms of how many words you can include and like I said make sure you get the assistance of the PI that you want to work with to be able to actually you know develop this and the support of your PI will always be very very important in terms of um, ensuring that the application gets to the next stage and the next stage and so on and so forth and just to finalize um, obviously those stuff like I'm um, this paragraph are not really important it's just some more details and you can see you just put the reference at the end of it but yeah this guys was just a quick overview and I thought I should just um, show you that but you can look at um, various examples of this on um, findthephd.com there are so many examples on there of how you can structure kind of a, like a research proposal so you just use that as a guide and um, to help you um, like I said you might be required to do a long um, longer version of this PhD proposal um, which can also kind of stem into like maybe writing a grant anyway so I've actually created a video and I did that video a while back ago so you can have a look at that so in this video I actually delve into actually how to write a PhD proposal from the start from the idea to the end um, so that's a more full in detail video of how to actually approach a longer PhD proposal um, if you're required to do so um, but for this video, like I said, I'm going to be concentrating on just the application process and yeah, so let's just get started. So it's very important for you to have a short snappy title um, of what you aim to do um, and then I think it's very important for a PhD proposal um, for you to have in the first paragraph just kind of an overview on the topic so just kind of give like almost like an introduction a very very short introduction into the topic and then once you give that short introduction into the topic then you could go on to kind of writing and creating the aims of the project I think it's good to divide this into different different bullet points um, and then maybe stating maybe kind of individually um, the importance and why this will be significant for the project itself then um, one thing you can also do is kind of 
create like a whole timeline um, maybe first year this is what you aim to do um, and the methods that you're going to be using then second year this is what you aim to do the methods you're going to be using third year and so on and so forth and I think that's just a good way to break things down and for them to see that you already have kind of a, a logical way or chronological way of going about things in terms of um, addressing the different questions or the different points that you want to address during your PhD um, and I always think that it's just very good to break things down because it just makes it easier for people to read and understand and digest um, in terms of picking one thing at, at a time rather than just having a whole block of text um, it's just very good to kind of break things down um, for the reader um, and then once you do that I think it's also very important to just maybe at the last bit just maybe write um, kind of um, what you hope and what you think the implications of these um, this study or this question that you're wanting to address is gonna have in the greater scheme of things and then the last bit is literally just references um, so whatever references that you've been able to use um, in um, writing this for example the introduction part of it um, so like I said I just think that for this part it's just very important for you to keep it very simple straight down to the point because this is only for the application side of things you might be required to write a longer um, PhD proposal as you go on and like I said it's just very important for you to get the assistance and the help of the supervisor that you want to work with because they will be able to guide you through properly in terms of how you should structure this proposal um, all in all but like I said again <laughs> I'm literally saying like I said again um, if you want a longer version of how to write a PhD proposal then you should have a look at my other video which I've created um, and that will be in the link in the description below so I hope you've basically found um, this video informative I know it's a very short video but I wish you all the best in your PhD application so make sure you stay blessed dream big and keep being inspired and I'll see you in the next video take care Goodbye.